Order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any additions or are we good to approve as written? Good to approve. Okay, all in favor? All right. <clears throat> so I don't see Brent here, but Alvi's here, so I don't know if you want to swap. Do you, are you waiting for anyone, Alvi? No, there's a lot. We're kind of all spread out right now okay. because of the, um, the yeah, the forum that's happening in, in Royalton. Oh, that's yeah. right, yeah. You know, that's fine. I just don't see our other person here, so I don't want to make you stay any longer. Okay, yeah, if you want to go first, you can. Yeah. Do you want me to stand up? Does it matter? Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. So um, I, did, I did put in the town, um, just so you know, the select board got the, the, the write-up yes. and the flyer. Okay. Did you guys have any questions before I, or that's kind of really all I was gonna ask really if you guys have like looked at it already. And so if you look, I have a question, have you decided where, like have you found? Yeah, so in the, on the poster people, it has oh, addresses yeah, so as well. Oh yeah, so you found sponsors. Yep, yep. and then we also included um, the, the, the parish house here in downtown, it's the only nice. one that's handicap accessible. Um, and the idea oh, isn't that good. you would only go to the one that like your, like that would be yours essentially, not necessarily the closest one, just whichever one you would be. Available yeah. for. Um, and then there would be a head of back of that area that would be all the heads of the other areas? Yeah, well, so the idea is we have one person from each from the subcommittee. On the subcommittee, it's, um, and I'm not going to be able to remember everyone's name, or last names anyway, but Lisa from the um, other I'm, I'm the only one from, or, so EIC has um, Jess, Owen, and me, and then the um, town planning committee. Brought. Oh, the town community engagement. Yeah, yes. Lisa um, McCrory. Not, yes, not Lisa town. McCrory. The, McCrory. Lisa McCrory. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Cindy and um, Cindy Metcalf. Lily wasn't able to attend most of the meetings just because yeah. of a conflict, but mm -hmm. they had originally. She had originally come on. But yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I lost my so train of thought already. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So somebody from somebody from either committee will be at each of them who signed someone up. Not necessarily in the subcommittee, but someone from each of the committees because they've both been like. So I think his question is, do you have well. a person that lives in each of these areas that's yes. going to be the head of the subcommittee? Yes. Who well, is it on of, Christian Hill or East Bethel? Who's that? Do you know? I, I would have to double check. But, so 83, um, is that you? Who lives no, that's Kirk. <laughs> oh, Kirk did yep. I was like, And I believe it's at his, his house. Yeah. The head of the... No, so we, we have somebody from, and I can pull up, if it's okay for me to be on my phone. Of really. course. I'll pull up the, the email that has the confirmed. Um, and then all the heads will meet. And so the idea is that we'll have a meeting yes. on the 12th of November um, to just kind of convene on everything that was talked about at each of them. But it's just the members. It's that it's just the members and they're going over of the literature. notes from the meetings? I think the idea is that it would be also open to the public and we would Good. have like a, yeah, that would be where we'd kind of just like talk about like essentially a recommendation if that was going to be the situation. Because um, yeah. the idea is not necessarily to come up with like, I mean, it's really just to kind of like let's get to know our neighbors a little bit that already like helps lower it let's have conversations about what's happening because sometimes like what's happening on my end of sand hill is going to be different than what's happening on the other end of sand hill like sure. so who is east bethel and christian hill? yep uh, and i believe that's probably going to be kirk Jean. oh you don't think it's kirk white well he's not on the I, as far as the person leading the conversation it is kirk white as far as like who's he's, hosting gene uh -huh. kraus i'm pretty sure i'm just trying to sorry is i need to this Neighborhood. Oh, East Bethel? No, Bethel. And I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm probably completely. Oh, you're so, fine. So, um, may I make a Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I looked at this and, and Cindy Metcalf showed me this at the, the uh, Ford Festival. And it's really a neat because it reminds me of after I read. We had yeah. Citizens Plus. Yeah, you did. Citizens Plus, and we had these geographic. You had the geo leads. Yeah. Geo leads, right? Yeah. Yes. And we had these mm -hmm. uh, divisions like that, and divisions. Mm -hmm. And and I know that uh, part of it was where um, certain people in certain areas. Yeah, we still do it. A yes. Little bit. Yeah. Yes. And so I remember me being, and, and Cindy came up to me. And I think she's gonna getting other people involved because since I was cool. so involved in my area yeah. um, with Citizens Plus, right. you know, giving out we had um, uh, all these um, pan uh, folders and, and yeah. information we put together. I went door to door, hundred 
Pathlands all up in my area, um, and North Road and Cleveland Brook. So I think it sounded like a, a similar like of what we're doing at Citizens Plus, that it really looks, and I think uh, other people are gonna get involved and, okay. and help and do the area thing. So, so would you yeah, to answer your question, yeah. So the idea is that we're going to have, it's kind of like a, we wanted a loose conversation. We wanted there to be like a facilitator kind of making sure that we're keeping it constructive, at least. So Jean is the person from East Bethel and Christian Hill for that um, neighborhood. And then it's, uh, Owen is planning, it, this is kind of unconfirmed. We, we're we having the meeting on um, Wednesday would be the meeting where we're confirming this. Okay. Um, but yeah, so downtown, the parish house, that'll be Owen. Uh -huh. um, Gilead would be Lisa. Um, Rita from the EIC would be doing uh, Camp Brook in Lilliesville. And oh, then, yeah, Rita Cedar, or Rita um, Champion. Champion, yeah. 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 And, and then uh, North Road, Lotus Creek would be Cindy. Um, okay. It's kind of what we've been planning. And then we'll have um, somebody also from one of the groups taking notes. And So they're going to be the facilitator, and then there's a note taker, and then you guys are going to get together with the facilitators yeah. and the note takers to do the meeting. Okay. And then yeah. what's the, I mean, what's the overall goal at the The goal the is really just meeting. to kind of, um, it's kind of like what's, I, I know in the <laughs> packet there was some of that too, where it's just kind of like the three kind of points of what we're trying to do. The, the first point is just kind of to try to like meet your neighbors and like write down instances of crime that are happening because there are downtown. like and it's different for different parts obviously like you guys mm -hmm. on Christian Hill are having a different situation than what's happening like downtown mm -hmm. um, but yeah and then I mean the goal is just I mean that's kind of it and then come up with a solution we don't have like a concrete we're planning on like doing something but potentially like a recommendation to you guys or, or something essentially but yeah, it says there'll be a note taker who will anonymously take notes of what is shared in a follow-up meeting on the 12th to anonymously share back what we learn, think of ways we can move forward together to address issues. I mean, um, do you want to work with the police department in this? I think or? the plan, I mean, uh, um, the only thing that was kind of thought was that because of, like, certain people are having, like, thoughts about how the police department is handling things so far that we wouldn't want them to be there as police, but they're definitely welcome to come as No, but I mean, after members. your final meeting, all the heads get together, is that main group taking this to the police department or is this just a main group and then we just trickle back down to the communities and just uh, yeah, or are you bringing this stuff to the select board so the I, th I think I think the idea would be that on that on that meeting on the 12th we would be kind of taking the feedback that we got along with part of that conversation would be solutions and, and stuff and I feel like for some of that it is like you're saying like you would want to bring some of it back to the police but some of it could be just like Man, like things that we can tell the police to do and also just other if like, there are more different solutions than just policing for certain right. things. Right, and since you're an advisory committee you would bring those ideas to the select board then the select board would decide. Somebody, probably you from the select board would go talk to Ryan about the results. I just don't know if, if you guys want that. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would imagine that. It, I mean, it depends what kind of comes out of the community conversation, but I must, I'm also assuming that some of that is going to be policing, like how, how we're policing. Because I have a meeting with Ryan this weekend, um, and I was already anticipating discussing this with him. Um, and I guess I don't, I guess I didn't realize Gene was a, a head of East Bethel and Christian Hill. I mean, we've been dealing with this on our own for, Years, a couple he's, years now. But it's just, he is it's just not, the it's, facilitator it's just, because he's, he's facilitating on the conversation. That's it. Because he's on he's equity and inclusion. Anything. No, I know, but just yeah. he's bringing that conversation to the rest of it. So it's just. Yeah. It is. It is also pretty no new as far as stuff like figuring it out. We're we're we've been meeting for a couple months, but like the the details of that getting hammered out are pretty pretty recent. Um, okay. And you guys, I mean, go to the. You're gonna go. Go to that one on the twenty uh, second. Yeah. Yeah, so he, because Gene is on the Equity and Inclusion Committee, so everybody who's facilitating He's is either the on the Equity and Inclusion or the Community Engagement Committee. So that's how they're doing it. So this is their first outreach attempt, and uh, I don't know if you guys have been following the select board meetings and talking about that. Obviously, we've been talking about policing. I know you guys mentioned, like, the, uh, it was one of the last ones I attended in person that I attended virtual for a little while, but um, I, I know, Chris, you mentioned the, like, Starting some sort of community watch, essentially, is what you had mentioned during Jordan the Jordan did, yeah. Jordan did. wanted to start. Yeah, so I mean, I, it's essentially the same idea where we just need to start thinking about those solutions because we definitely are like, it's there's lots of little things in different parts of town, and there's only so much the police can actually do too, yeah, and there's only so much here. we can afford to ask them to do. So it's it's definitely the idea is just that we would start thinking about ideas. This is definitely more of the beginning than yeah. 
Well, and it's also good, too, because Jordan's idea of a community engagement, it would be nice to know who was there to see if they would, or community watch, if they would be interested, whoever shows up to these meetings, would they be interested in joining a community watch? Because um, that's something that Jordan had been talking to Ryan Palmer about, the sheriff, and we've talked to him about that briefly, too. So. I've had quite a few people ask me if they should be going to this. So that's, I just wanted as many details as I can get to give them my feedback on participating as well. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think, I, I think that the more people that come, the more ideas we're going to get about how to handle this. Um, and if they, I, I mean, I, I definitely agree that there should be more policing, uh, but it, it depends how that is going to be. Like, I don't know that the Windsor County Sheriff is always the best, like, the police are not always the best to handle every situation, but there definitely are situations where, like, it makes sense for some. Yeah. Yeah. I saw in the news recently that, or in the newspaper, I don't remember which, that they had hired someone for the local VSP barracks that does, like, a social... Or yeah. for certain situations when maybe something needs Somebody to be showing up with like lights and sirens isn't get, exactly yeah. what you're, yeah. So I mean, there, it's, it's coming up with solutions for, I mean, there's, they handle currently like essentially all problems. You, you see something scary, you call the cops. It's, yeah. That's just kind of how, how it yeah. works. Exactly. And I think too, for us, it's something that we'll be talking about in budget time is to afford mm -hmm. how many more hours can we afford. That. Yeah. Yes. So, well, I think it's great that you're doing that and that you yeah. sorted it out. So we definitely would encourage anyone to go to any of the meetings that you can, essentially. Uh, if you can go to the one in your community, that's great. But if you can't, like that time doesn't work, feel free to join one of the other ones. That was why we tried to stagger them so we could try to get as many people to engage as we can. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, hopefully you guys, you know, get a good group and have some ideas, or at least if people are interested in, you know, increasing the police hours, that's good to know, too, for the select board when they're trying to put the budget together is, you know, are people willing to pay for more than just 24 hours or 20, a week, you know? So that'd be good to know, too. Yeah, I feel like it's also good to know what, because I feel like obviously when there's like the bigger stuff that's happening in town, like that's the stuff we hear about more, but there's also like, I'm sure there's other stuff, too, that, we, that you know, the little things that people don't mention, like someone pulling in your driveway late at night and like kind of, Either checking the place out or like freaking your dogs out. Like, or, yeah, your dog, some yeah. your neighbor's dog barking. Half yeah. 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 Well, the, so, the yeah. biggest yeah. problem is what you can legally do about, about them. Yeah. yeah. But if you get to know your neighbors, that's always a big It help. makes a big, yeah, it can make a big it's difference. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, people yeah. keep an eye on your I already know, more, know them better than I've ever known before. <laughs> yeah. We haven't even done this yet. Yeah. yeah. We, we're all, all pretty we close about. up there. Yep. That's so you're good. gonna have these conversations over a period of a week, and then on the 12th, you, you'll be getting together to share that information through the <clears throat> five boroughs or whatever that you yeah. did. And then, so are we figuring like you're gonna come to the board on the 18th to report? I, I think back? if we're uh, assuming that we're all like we've collected our notes and stuff, I would assume so. Yeah. I mean, the idea least. is to definitely communicate with you guys. <clears throat> yeah. So you just reach out to me when you want an appointment. Yeah. Perfect. At least just to check in. Yeah, definitely. And mm -hmm. I'll, I mean, yeah. I'm usually here in some form, so I'll yeah. keep you updated too. But yeah. yeah, it'd be great to know what. Well, I mean, I, th I think we should establish a date for them to come and yeah. report back yeah. to us because yeah. even if is, they're not totally ready. I mean, if this was just a random is that the group, next board meeting? I mean, if it was a random group of people just getting together to talk about these things, then they don't need to report back to the select board ever. Right. But being that they are. Um, so November is going to be formal tricky because of the 11th or the 12th. But well, being that they're formal day. committees of the town, right. well, they should report that information mm -hmm. back. What did they say November 12th? So yeah, the next meeting would be the 18th. No, would be. Oh, I'm sorry, 25th. the 25th. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'll put you in for an appointment on the 25th at okay. six o'clock. That sounds good. And um, so the ECI slash community engagement. Oh, that's a quite a title. All right. We probably should mm -hmm. invite our legislators to that meeting, maybe, mm -hmm. so they can hear well, what, what some of the issues are. Because again, I mean, there, there, you know, there, there are clearly issues that could be resolved better through the current system, mm -hmm. and then there are issues that, you know, even if you do something about it right now, that you know, there are, uh, you know, due to. Decisions made in Montpelier that you know is going to go anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. So it'd be good for our legislators to hear some of the issues that we yeah. are having, mm -hmm. or the ones that maybe they could use in Montpelier to steer yeah. Yeah. different programs of you know, <clears throat> you know, 
parole type stuff or, you know, yeah. the bail reform mm -hmm. or, you know, those things. So, because mm -hmm. it is challenging. And, and it's, <clears throat> I, I have, I do a lot of work on the road and in communities and I have never seen it so bad, like around Vermont in all the towns, ever. Like lots of drug related, crime related, you know, they all kind of come together in pairs, right? When one happens, the other happens, and now you got the whole like economy and everything's expensive and more homelessness. You know, there's mm -hmm. there's a lot going on right now, and it, it's and it's well seen. It's not like it's hidden like no, normal. Oh, we're not right trying to hide it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Can you all day, sign day, in? So. There's a sign in sheet. Are you guys here for the select board meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Can listen, yes. Excellent. Oh yeah, absolutely. But more yeah, I think here. it's great to do it. Um, it I mean, I think it's great to collect the information from everybody and, and then, then try to plan, you know, some type of, um, you know, long-term solution if that's bring it to the select board for the select board to work through or, you know, putting together neighborhood watches or, you know, I mean, it'd be good to... And the idea that. is to have more of these conversations in the future, too, to kind of keep <clears throat> yeah. something going, essentially, because there is, I know there's some dollars behind it, too, to kind of keep, keep stuff like that going. So it's, yeah. if we have it, we might as well be using it to yeah. kind of engage the community. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. And, and, it and it's good information to have, because, you know, when we go to town meeting day, and I'm just yeah. making it up, if we decide to increase um, hours of service for, you know, policing or something like that, and then people, when they're thinking about the extra cost, can be like, oh, wow, there is all these other issues that we've been having rather than say, oh, I haven't heard anything, you know? Yeah. So it's good to get information out there. Because, I mean, if I didn't come here, I wouldn't hear, I, I mean, if I wasn't as involved in the, I wouldn't yeah. hear anything on my, like, sure. I see nothing. I see people speeding. I see people, like, hitting animals and stuff because they're speeding, but I don't see, like, I don't see that side of it that much, so. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, thank you for yeah. coming tonight. Yeah. And Have you guys? Sounds like a good plan. Heard of the Rutland City Patrol that's going on down there? No. <clears throat> I'm not suggesting it. I'm just wondering if you. But it would be. I mean, yeah. It's like a community watch. It's the volunteer group that's around to help out. Yeah, and that's. I mean, those are the kind of suggestions and stuff that we're kind of looking to try to get. It's a dicey thing. But. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, it's like it's it's. I'm sure there are people who have like. It's good to get lots of minds on this kind of stuff of like what kind of alternative solutions can we come up with if if the one that we're doing and you know continually pouring money into isn't working. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sounds good. Great. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Thanks, Elvie. Yeah. Yeah, I guess your six o'clock is a no show. Yeah, I um, mean we'll just. Keep it as a placeholder, and yeah, they end up coming. In. Then we'll. Uh, did, did he say if he was going to come in person, or if he was in Zoom? Zoom. Zoom. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think he's from Pennsylvania. I kind of looked at their whole yeah. website and everything else. It looks a pretty cool yeah. thing they got mm -hmm. going on. It did. I sent him the agenda with the link. Because so. I was. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think they're still. I think they're Pennsylvania, so it's the same time zone. Oh, <laughs> that's what I was wondering yeah. if it was a different oh, time I didn't zone. Oh, about that. Yeah. So no, I I haven't heard from him, and maybe something came up on his end. So we'll open up to public comment. So if there's anything anybody would like to bring up that's not on the agenda, now would be the time. There's nobody online, so just be in person. If anybody has anything you want to bring up? You can bring up whatever you want. Just make sure you just um, state your name for the record oh, and yeah. for the note takers. And Who? Lori Oh, sorry. Thank you, Lori. I know you guys have been working on it, but we need to do something on Christian Hill bad. So uh, we definitely have a problem. Are you scared? Maybe. Well, when somebody tries to get into your car, and they, that scares you my neighbors i'm probably going to lose my tenant so they're afraid to let the kid stay outside because of the traffic because of the drugs across because the street the yeah. i mean i get up the other morning if my dog hadn't barked i would have never known that i had her out there in the yard thank god he did yeah and she was out of it and it's who was out of it i don't know who the girl is but i hear bill stoddard had a problem too i don't know if we know her name yet yeah, that's bad. It's bad. So you can call time. Oh, oh yeah. So I had three troopers she was up there. In the driveway? Oh yeah, screaming that she needed help, but she really didn't. I don't think she was out of it. She was out of it. She uh, her backpack, her phone was left there. 
It's bad up there. How long did it take the state trooper? Oh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Yeah, 40 minutes. Yeah. I guess I need to know what I have to do up there, like to post what I have to do, something, because it's right across the street. Yeah. The, um, and it's, been, it's been three years. Certainly, yeah, I mean, and we've gone from constable to the sheriff, the, what the select board will, is going to be talking about in the fall is increasing, possibly increasing the policing budget, because we right now only have 24 hours, and we jumped from, what do we have, a $50,000 budget to an $80,000 budget? It used to be 20, but. 20, yeah. It was 80, so, but. I went out with I and I introduced myself to one of the officers. Yeah. I told him I love seeing him. I don't need to see him at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. That's not where our problem is. Mm -hmm. It starts at 11.30 at night, and it'll go to almost 5 in the morning. Yeah. It's steady traffic out there, I mean, it is a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And I always kind of, to be honest with you, I've always believed what you do on your property is your business, yeah. but when it starts coming to the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I did meet with um, the commander of the state police barracks, Lieutenant Department, um, and he'd come when he first took over to be the new commander. And, he knew we were talking to the sheriff's office, and he basically, they are really short-staffed. He had people working doubles on a regular basis, and he's like, I, I'll help you if I can, but he's like, you need to get, you know, the sheriff, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna contract, and I said that I thought that we were going that way. The other thing that he said, which was really, which was beyond our purview, which is, the state, his legislator, he said, he told me, he said, Teresa, if you just gave me a name, I could come back here, if they've been arrested, and show you their sheet where they've been catch and release and catch and release. And he said, Vermont legislatures and the centers need to deal with bail reform. He said, people, you know, just are getting a slap on the wrist. And he said, and it's hard for them. It's discouraging to the police departments, any of them, sheriff, local, VSP, but in this climate, there's a lot of people that don't want to be police officers anymore. And he, he, he's last, I, I mean, he's still quite short-handed. Mm -hmm. And um, he, we did talk a little bit about the state <clears throat> increasing pay because some people are coming to Vermont, going through and being trained to be troopers, and then they're leaving to go to other states because the pay is better. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, obviously something beyond our purview. What the town can do is <clears throat> work on trying to afford increase in policing. But as far as posting your property, I'd have to look because <clears throat> I, Dave and I talked about this and I was confused in my mind whether or not it was posting for efficient game where it doesn't had to matter. be on an individual post. I looked it up, doesn't matter. Okay. If you want to post your property, it has to be done on the corners, every so many feet or with visible and 100, uh, 360 degrees. So one of the state troopers that used to be here, who's now retired, his friends of mine, but he lives at Ben. Yep. And I saw him this last week, and he says, you gotta get your property posted. Because I told my wife, I'm gonna get fine with it. I get rid of every gun we owned. Yep. And get more. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's, so posting your property, and then the, the good thing is, is it gives anyone, sheriff, VSP, or someone, I believe more, then they're violating, you're not trespassing, and if you've done it properly, then I think that adds to, I mean, they're gonna slap them on the wrist twice, but, you know, that might be the only thing that. Um, now, do you have to read, I, I know like in Northfield, my brother-in-law posts his property for hunting, and then he has to go to the town office. It has to be registered. But that's, it has and to then registered. up every six months. That's yeah. what we have to do. And he has to do that it's every It's a lot of work. Before. Yeah, oh yeah, you have to go to the town and register everything. For five, can't. I think it's five dollars. Yeah. Registered, but I thought that was only if you're posting for hunting and fishing. I looked I it up. Trespassing, okay. hunting, fishing. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, I think the proper it. signage too. Yeah. 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 You didn't have just take right. a piece of cardboard and write on. No, no, it has to be yes, every so many feet, yeah. like Dave was saying, and, and then you pay. Last I knew, it was five dollars. So you have to get to this from the town. No, you could you could buy them at Mills Hardware. Well, I know I see them, but I just didn't know if you needed something special. No, no, and um, you would just need, and then you can register the property, like I said, with Pam at the town clerk's office, and I, I think it's just five bucks. But whether you, I thought that was just annually, but again, I'm not the town clerk, so I don't know all the rules. But um, the other thing is too, uh, you came in after Alvi I'm was. Sorry. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. If you're coming after Alvi was here, so they are doing these community conversations. I don't know if you saw that. Did you get a flyer? Okay, give her yours. Okay. And um, 
So it would be, it, I would, you know, we all would encourage you to go because, you know, it's going to be other people. They're going to be, there's going to be someone there uh, facilitating the conversation from equity and inclusion and or community engagement. But like Denise was saying earlier, you can meet your neighbors and. Um, yeah, there's something in this panel from that. You're saying you're afraid to let their kid out and play if she's little. Mm -hmm. right? They're afraid of what's going to happen across the street from the yard. And that's not how it should be. No. And that's what's been going on. Like, that's what's been yeah. going on with my kids. That's why it's just, it's headed to an escalated spot that's going to end terribly for yeah. good people. Yeah. Because I mean, this is on I've really never had 27 years of living, never had a lot. Like I do now. And I'm watching a, a Subaru go up and down all week we have. It has no play, no temporary play. They don't even care anymore. It doesn't matter. They're just whatever. The three troopers that came told me right out, they know there's a problem there, but nobody does anything. Like you know what? What do you want us to do? Right. We, and we the sheriff. Call, they, they have a file. We had a we have a file number on the refrigerator. All that, all that stuff they have. Yeah. But nothing. They can't do anything. With and it. I told them I understand this is a problem that can't be fixed overnight. But three years into it, with the same problem, it's a little ridiculous. It doesn't. To me, I don't get why. Maybe you know the answer. Why can't somebody go in undercover and buy drugs and then they arrest them? Like, the people that can do it are only getting 24 hours of death. Yeah. Well, so the we VSP, because he said he was going to talk to the drug task force. I've been trying with VSP for three plus years. They're yeah. not. There's nothing happening. No, and they're they. Understaffed or not, there's just nothing mm -hmm. happening. I, I don't front it. I'm going to have to put my house up for sale. Yeah. And if I do, I won't get anybody to buy that place because it's across the street. Yeah. No. I don't blame them. Take they just word for it. they just bought the neighbor's house dirt cheap because of it. Mm -hmm. so well, the, I mean, how when they the, just sold down the street on Purim. Oh yeah, I they got a good deal on that because of it. What do you think if um, if a I would board, like to... what do you think about having the talking to the sheriff's office and having them concentrate their twenty four hours I, a week on Christian I was, Hill for a while? I was wanting to bring a percentage of like we would like to see a percentage of it, not just there's a couple hot spots, but these tickets and stuff great, but right now it's the crime and and it's everyone's worried about their safety. So can we focus 60% of our time on these big issues instead of sitting downtown and waiting for a, a speeder? And they're not issuing tickets. Well, that's what I'm saying. Warnings. The speeding stuff is, is just not, nothing's yeah. happening there. It's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Better so off kind of taking a ride up there. The only way it's going to help is it'll help the police. So if someone comes onto your property, then you have properly posted it. What it's going to do as far as charges, I, I don't know. And well, Vermont's yeah, such a. Know those people that come yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. People are wanting to post so that they can take care of this themselves. Yeah. That, that's what's happening. But what's the state law about that? They have to be in your house. At a certain point. No, it doesn't matter. Um, think they, got more, they got more rights than that's the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, can't, you can't protect yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, that. unfortunately, that, that's the situation that we're in is like we're, you know, doing, you know, what Alvi and his group are doing is fantastic for, you know, a, a broad range of, of issues that we have in town. But like in your case, your case, your case, you know, the Christian Hill matters, and there are other areas kind of similar to that is, and we've seen it in, you see it in Vermont. It's, it's, you know, it, it is a textbook of what happens when you get soft on crime. And Vermont did that. And Vermont went very progressive on crime to the point that they were enabling drug users. And what happens when you enable? People do more of it. They do more of it. They feel safer. Now they're not hiding drugs because they know they're not, nothing's going to be done. And, I, and I'm willing to bet the reason why the sheriffs and the VSP don't spend a lot of time you know, like the old days, it used to be, you know, someone got uh, in trouble and then they said, okay, I want you to go buy drugs from them so we can get them, right? They don't do that anymore because they know those people are just going to be back out in 24 hours. It, there's two years of backlog judicial system. They're never going to go anywhere. And then if they do, the, the prisons are crowded and they're going to let them back out again. You know what I mean? It's, so it's like, why should they even try to hide it anymore? Because they know nothing's going to happen to them. And, and that's the situation that we're stuck in. And unfortunately, what really needs to happen is, you know, people really need to deal with this issue 
in a massive group protest, march down the streets and go to the Capitol and be like, listen, you need to get tough on crime. I mean, you go, I, and I'll just, I won't want to go through a whole bunch of things, but, you know, I just remember, you know, Church Street, Burlington. Anybody that's ever been to Church Street, Burlington? So Church Street, Burlington used to be a nice boutique. You, there's there's you know, actually kind of pricey boutiques, um, nice outdoor eateries, and there used to be wonderful, like, um, entertainers that would come from all over the you know, United States to perform on the streets. It was very tastefully done, mm -hmm. right? It was mixed with law enforcement. It was always a good time. Ben and Jerry's ice cream, all whole nine years, right? And I and my daughters wanted to go to Lululemon last year to get some things before school. And I hadn't been to Church Street in years. And you know, you go to the parking garage. It's like, I'm not kidding you. There's like a dozen, dozen and a half people sleeping on drugs in the in parking garage. You don't even feel safe to park. Then you go out on the street and you haven't even made it to Church Street and there is people everywhere. And it's not like they're hiding it. They're doing drugs, they're drinking, they're doing all kinds of activities right on the street. You don't see any law enforcement and then you don't see people shopping. The only people that you see shopping are clearly people that aren't from the area, you know? And it's so sad to see and, and unfortunately, it's happening in all the communities now because they're just letting it go. They're not getting tough on it and it really, and I think that's what law enforcement at this point has done is they're like, what do we do? Like, we try to find creative ways to book them, right? And then they go into the system to get back out. Mm -hmm. or, or, maybe the, or maybe law enforcement comes up with some creative ways to try to get them in trouble. Or, you know, or they're, they're doing the trouble, but find a creative way. And then they get in trouble for exploiting that creative way of, you know, pulling somebody over be based on, mm -hmm. you know, different profilings and stuff. And, and this is where we're at now. Nothing's getting done. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you know, we just got graffitied on the wall. Where'd that come from? I mean, I mean, it takes a while to graffiti a wall. I mean, <laughs> I mean, one day it's not there, next day it's there. It must've taken hours to do it, but nobody saw it or, you know. Mm -hmm. and I was yeah. doing a job, I was mm -hmm. working. Yeah. I had to pick him up at the airport, brought him to the Marriott. Mm -hmm. I actually felt bad, and I finally said to them, what made you come to Burlington? They work for National Life, mm -hmm. and National Life wanted mm -hmm. them there. They think there's some special thing they're going to do there for work. I'm thinking of all places, why down here? Yeah, and I was sad, because it used to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. No, and it's, it's, it's <coughs> I think any of us that have lived here in Vermont, have seen it significantly go downhill in the last, just the last couple of years. It just, mm. it went from like, people had drug issues and maybe some homelessness and you saw it sometimes, but not, now you just go anywhere. Like, well, it used to be go, drive anywhere right now in a town and you'll see them on the corners. They're, they're zombies, there, like, they're... At my son's farm, yeah. mm -hmm. he owns Pearly's old place. Mm -hmm. And they just had the cops there because they've got a, ten, a bunch of tenting people out there living. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, we've had people at Peavine Park living in their cars, this and that. And someone approached one of the employees that was just out for a morning walk before coming to work. And, and um, so, you know, we certainly, you know, it's late numbers. Uh, absolutely. It shouldn't be like this. No. That's not. Yeah. And most of those probably are not a drug problem, to yeah. be honest with you. They're just unfortunately having a tough time. Yeah, the economy and everything. Yeah, this person was definitely intoxicated or something. So it was a little sketchy, but they figured out who it was and called, you know, someone. But so what's your <clears throat> thought process here, Jordan? Do you do you want to? Do you want to get Ryan in? Do you want to talk to him? Do you want me to tell him tomorrow that the select board's do you want, as a board, to say, focus the 24 hours a week on Christian Hill for a period of time because it's becoming so? What do you want to do? I definitely don't want <laughs> it to be a, you're, this is Christian Hill. This is not just Christian Hill. Well, it's I know. Christian Hill and there's, North Main Street. There's like three, Street, four hot spots in town. Well, in town. Right. So I'm definitely not looking for that. Uh, but if we're paying, then does 70% of this go to hotspots. Well, and, and yeah, and just and say, look, we don't now, give them a pass on traffic road. tickets. Give them a pass on traffic. Just say, don't do traffic We're enforcement not. unless someone's going, you know. If, as a board to decide, you know, yeah, if you pass somebody cranking by and pull them over, but don't spend the time looking for, looking for. I mean, you're going to see it. I mean, if you're out doing whatever, it's going to happen anyway. And they're going to be speeding anywhere. Christian Hill, yeah. Gilead, North Main. So you know, we, obviously, we have a vehicle that's on Christian Hill. 
It's got no number plate, and the windshield is smashed. Yeah. So there's two violations right there. They, they, they just see them and they can stop them. And, and, and they, I went drove by them today, this morning, half an hour, half an hour down the road, and there's two the people. I mean, it's in effect for two, two hours, one hour, three hours, one hour. Well, I know that's broken hours. up because they're already in, you know, Stockbridge or they're already in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's, not effective. it's not effective to deal with the issues that well, no. so the, we're talking about. Right, you need to come in for but eight hours block. The, so. the issue also is that you come in and it's how hard to pick up my phone and go, Hey, they're up at the house. Let's go somewhere else. Right. So they you're chasing them around coming. town. Hmm? I swear they know when they're coming. Mm -hmm. because if you, you call, call in, they them. all have scanners, so it just goes right to them. But if the sheriff department knows in advance that you want them to do four hour Focus. Yeah, yeah. The sheriff's got to know that, too. There's but they can jump from, they got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. They're not going to just stop. Mm -hmm. So chase it. Mm -hmm. Spend three hours chasing it. Question. Sure. The, the, the men and women that are put on uh, patrol just for traffic violations, are they equipped to handle a drug problem? Yeah. Are, are oh, they yeah. all trained yes. to yes. do the same thing? One of the major night people for Bethel is the canine unit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jackson? I think they're well, they're well trained. I think, I think the roadblock, and I don't want to say that they don't care. I think they have been depleted to the point knowing that whatever they do, that, that nothing's going to happen to it. You know, like they could selectively pull that individual over with the no license plate, cracked windshield. But it all comes down to legality. Like but then I mean, they're I mean, back up there four yeah. hours later in the same vehicle because nothing happens to them. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's the issue. And it, you know, maybe through our community, I know it's well, non-registration are going to impact. <clears throat> but oh, like, maybe through our community discussions, once we have these discussions in the different boroughs, and we start pooling that information, maybe one of the discussion points of that is, you know, kind of ranking what are the issues we have and how could we potentially combat that. Like, speed's easy, right? I mean, speed we can do speed patrol, or some of those things are easy. But like, when you get into like a drug issue, or breaking and entering or things like that, then that becomes something that's more out of our control, but more like, do we need to get legislators involved? You know, like, it needs to go higher, because even if we do... Was it Champlain that just got broken into, plus yeah. the sandwich shop, plus... Yeah. I mean, it's just... And it's they just were here, like, an hour of, before, and then the cannabis shop got broken into. And yeah. they were here, like, an hour before that happened. Whoever did the cannabis shop knew what they were doing, because... They were, um, there was a small part where their exhaust went from their um, indoor air conditioner and they broke it out. It was obviously a small person to get through the space and then they went right to where they canvassed the place. They knew what yeah. they were getting and went right back out. And then the next day, I think it was, it didn't happen the same night, but mm -hmm. then um, the, the, I think they took petty cash and deli meats and a bottle of wine from the sandwich mm -hmm. shop is what I heard. From what I heard, they didn't even take the expensive They didn't take wine. any wine. Yeah. They just took, yeah. they took the change and the deli meats. Well, yeah. they were hungry after they broke yeah. into the pot shop. Yeah, but they didn't the same <laughs> <Much night. laughs> but, So what do you, what would you like me to do? Uh, I'm happy to call Ryan Palmer tomorrow and say, look, we have people that are at the meeting and people are scared and you know, see what he can do for us. Just look, the 24 hours, we don't care about traffic patrol right now. We care about our resident safety. I think he, I think his schedule is usually pretty flexible. So mm -hmm. I wonder if maybe the best thing is to have like you with, you know, a member of Jordan, one or two members of the select board, just bring him in and say, these are the issues, these are the main issues we have right now, or, mm -hmm. or this is the one we want to focus on. What can you do about it? And let's just see what he has. I mean, if he says, well, at the end of the day, it's really, can't really do a whole lot about it, then, you know, but if he says, well, we could probably get creative and do X, Y, Z, then maybe we do some targeting time up there, you know, and blitz it at, in the morning or, or late at night or. Well, that's the time I have available. I was going to meet with him this weekend. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Then go ahead and meet with him. You know what the issues it, are. It's just or invite him into town and we, we can talk to him and see if what he can, what he thinks he can do for us. Yeah. I mean, it sounds. I'm sure his hands are tied on a lot of stuff, right? But. I will say one thing and I will just to 
I've never met the man. I've talked to him, but I've never met him. I will tell you that he has told me that if it gets really, really bad at any night, to text him. Mm -hmm. They try to find somebody to come up. The problem is by the time they get there, oh, yeah. our problem is moving. Yeah, they, go, they go by my house and five minutes later, they go back. So I was late getting back from Rick Lebanon today because I worked down that way and stuff and I wanted to pick up Sharon. So now my girlfriend and I were heading up to get her so I could get her as fast as we could. The same red car went to the bottom of the hill wherever they drop off and turn around and he was already back. And I'll Bet you any money, he's back down the hill two or three times since with any of And that's all day long. Yesterday there was a white truck up there, way too new for that house. Mm -hmm. Gotta be a newbie. All right, this one actually looks like it's in good shape. And uh, yeah, yeah. this one's scary over there too. This one did a weird thing because this one pulled up by the mailboxes, back down like they were going down the perm road, dropped something in the bushes and took off. Right, and next thing you know, of course, up comes our, our mm -hmm. Malibu up there and our all the cars we don't want up there. And then, then I've got them out there lighting up in the driveway. And I never worried until you start hearing my tenants worried. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's understandable. Is, is there any information about uh, trying to find the source of these drugs? The, I mean, we're at the, the tail sheriff, end of it. The sheriff told us that he told Jordan and I that he would work with the drug task force. I, and I believe that's made up of the VSP and I've, other police departments. I've had more recent conversations with him, and he said that they're moving along and working. And it's just mm. how much gets relayed back to the cameras in public. Of I got a perfect picture of that girl on my front porch the other day. Mm. Quite a few of them, mm -hmm. you know? And it's, it's a little scary when it comes to the house. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, when they're across the road, you worry and you watch. Yeah. But when they're in your yard, mm -hmm. that's a different old story. Old wall game. Yeah. I've told her, doors are locked. Yeah. Locked. I lock it when I come in my house. I used yeah. to never lock my doors. Me either. My house, my nothing. Nothing mm -hmm. was locked. Yeah. I don't leave anything unlocked. I even shut the windows when I leave the house. Yeah. Anything on the bottom floor. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. Yeah, we had, I mean, I live in Brookfield, but I had, so I was one morning, I was up early, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. There was some commotion outside, and I looked out my window, and somebody was messed up, and they were walking, and it was a female, and she was walking down the road, screaming at the top of her lungs, and I'm like, what is happening? And, uh, and, and was like, she's acting like she was on the phone, but she wasn't, I'm like, this woman is messed up, and I could hear her because where she was screaming and yelling the same things over and over again for, I, I bet it was a good quarter mile. I could hear her and I'm like, what is happening? Well, like, and that's they, what I think. When the young girl ran from that house across the street that's a problem with Mr. Stoddard, he put her in a car and took her down to the gas station. You're kidding. He didn't know. She he kept didn't. saying she needed help. And he, I guess he was taking her to South Royalton. He didn't call the police. I thought he had. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I think he was afraid to call the police. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid. No, he was, he was a little timid I want him about that. Yeah. But he dropped her off at the gas station uh, yeah. on the exit, and she went into that big um, bathroom yeah. thing, and she came out. She must have called somebody, because that red car came to pick her up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And they were right. Yeah. And it's it was back again, and all the black times, too. Mm -hmm. And you've called. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, after you stop calling, yeah, we know it's this number one X Y Z ten twelve four. Okay, we already know that number. What are you doing about it? Well, calling nine one one is just terrible, anyways. Mm -hmm. I mean, she it's, had it's a. Plate numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Because she was homeless. She's got license plate, but it doesn't do any good. Mm -hmm. And you guys, two of you, you know, I've lived here a long time. I don't come down to the town meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't usually bother you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's, it, it's true. It is a problem. I guess it's not. I don't mean to bother you. <coughs> Looking for a solution, I guess. What to do? What should be done? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I think that it's it's a couple of things. I think that one is uh, first. I just want to say that I'm so sorry you're experiencing well, it's not your this. Fault. No, I know, but I just you're not across the street. My heart goes out to you. And but the other one I think that would be helpful you to, for you to talk to is yes, going to the community conversations. But speaking to Kirk White, he lives down the street from you. He must be experiencing the same thing. Well, he's far enough away yeah. from the nonsense, so he sees traffic. But yeah, but I. But other he, than that, he's not involved in. 
but he is a legislator and and if i mean this is a state issue and so mm. certainly calling 911 every time you hear something my thing is this and i and i hate to say this and i'm sorry commander of the state please I'm a, I tell people, call 911, call 911, call 911, because eventually someone's going to get sick of hearing from you every time you keep calling. And if the sheriff is in the area, they'll send the sheriffs. If they're not in VSPs in the area, you know, they'll send them. But if not, you know, it kind of is a trickle down. But I do think talking to Kirk, and especially if he's, they're, ha they're holding this community meeting in your area at Kirk's house. If you're busy that night and you can't attend, then I think he, then you should have a conversation with Kirk because he and, and his cohorts, you know, Allison Clarkson and uh, Rebecca White. Is that Rebecca her? White. Rebecca White. I mean, these are the people who are going to, who, who've got a sponsor bill to do something. Can you ask Kirk to come to the meeting that Alvy comes back to? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I did. I wrote a note. Okay. But yeah, get Kirk to come. Can I just say something? When he had, when Kurt had all those people in his our field, um, those meetings, I don't know what they are, but the drug traffic was horrendous mm. between our little, across the street, and back and forth and back I, and forth. I'll speak to that, that uh, what happened simultaneously, which wasn't totally announced to everybody, but they had shut down one of the other hotspots by sitting on it so heavy that it moved to our location okay. and it picked up immensely right at that time and it was very poor timing but everybody over on Gilead was super happy <laughs> and you know it just moved to us. And I told her I didn't feel that was an issue down there. She knows that how I feel because yeah. they've always kept it no, contained down there. I had a lot of people feel that way and yeah. I've had to share that information mm -hmm. because it, it wasn't relevant. And also, too, we had a similar issue on North Main, and that issue changed because someone there was arrested in New Hampshire. Now, New Hampshire has real laws. Yeah. So there was a little different <laughs> issue, uh, and they maybe were gone a little bit longer. They're back, but they were detained a while. And um, so I think that, that Jordan was completely right, that when things slow down here, then they all know who they're just, yeah, it's a spot. It used to be if the sheriff showed up even during the day at noon, down for a couple of days. Uh huh. Not anymore. They know they're just sitting there at the mailboxes. They don't care at noon time. I mean, the other there. day, three state police were there, and I mean, it was a minute later, and they just back up again. Yeah. Um, Doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. And they're also on Cleveland Brook Road, where Abbott Road comes down. Yes. And then, sitting yeah. in the back of the truck, There's waiting Gilead for the drug deal to happen. Over. Over. Down on four, uh, 14. What's the other one there? Oh. Uh, Gage Road. Gage, Gage Road. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, I think there's four, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the conversation I'd like to have with him, and then, Absolutely. and then prepare for, I, I mean, I'll, I'll ask him to attend with Kirk, with all of us, we <coughs> all meet back here mm -hmm. on that day, Yeah. Mm -hmm. make a, I mean. And in the meantime, maybe he, you know, if he can juggle his schedule, and like Paul saying, an hour here, an hour there isn't cutting the mustard, maybe he can. You give us four, four hours, hours six and focus hours. it. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, it's not, you know, we're not Let's in give it, it a for try. the speeding tickets. Hurt, hey? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not like, you know, the other thing I noticed, too, was, I'm, I'm not sure if this is true or not, maybe you know, but I heard that uh, VSP didn't get the com the the um, contract for Tumbridge Fair this year, that it was actually the sheriff's office. Sheriff's office. Yeah. Yeah. So, I met up with And he's also there. taken care of. Orange County, like he's took over the courthouse. Oh, so, you know, Tumbridge, how, Chelsea. how stretched is yeah. he? I mean, he, you know, yes, mm. we're getting our hours, but I'll find out. This weekend. You know, an hour here, an hour there, but mm. you know, you're looking for, and, and I think we were sold on the idea it was going to be more blocks. And I'm wondering if an hour here was they got a call and they came yeah. over, and then when they answered the call, they spent another half hour here. I don't know. It's in the. It's in your packet. You can Paul's. look. Yeah, you can break down them. Look should. at the breakdown and see. Yeah. It's. Well, I'm glad you're going to talk to him this weekend. You obviously know what the select board thinks and your neighbors and and um, you know I think that. In the majority of the town. Well, and you're right that what you're concerned about is an escalation. Does they maybe want to just talk to them about other options? Like, do they have unmarked cars or you know that are? I've offered to let them sit. Yeah, I mean, other, you know, it's, I don't care how many people want me 
<laughs> sitting there and watch so you can see what we see. Yeah. Park in and a yeah. lot of people have said that, that they yeah. park away. We talked know. about taking the cruiser that we sold and just parking it for a while, but we think we'd have to move it around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Well, but, we appreciate you coming. And yes. Yeah. It's yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. These and things. Yeah, these. Mm. Yeah. Don't, don't think that we don't hear you. We're just, I think we're just as frustrated as you are as yeah. what can we do? And yeah. And I know we kind of took the first step forward this year by moving to the sheriff's away from um, doing it kind of in-house with the constable, but um, but it's been kind of a, you know, it's an evolving process so that. I, said, I thank that officer sitting there. I really do appreciate yeah. what you've done, mm -hmm. okay? And I do, I appreciate he was out there. Yeah. Just not at the right time. Exactly. That's not the time of the day we need to yeah. see him on Christian Head. Yeah, okay. exactly. So we can have a discussion and, it and see if there's like some more Jordan things we can do. Jordan is familiar with your situation, so that's good. Then he can talk, you know, turkey with with the sheriff on on Saturday. Yeah. That's he did. Plan. You guys up on Christian Hill need to start breeding German Shepherd puppies or something. You know, like <laughs> yeah. have a gang of thirty of them up there. And, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, I'm with you. Let them rip. You know. Yeah. You, you're you're going to be just much trouble if you shoot them. Yeah. If your dog you turn that dog loose. Oh, if he's protecting you might the yard. Sure. Oh. You're going. You're going to court. Yeah. And you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. I and thought they were just crazy putting thing. down the dog. He's going faster than the yeah. other one. It depends if you turned him on the dog or if the dog was there. Oh, the dog was in the yard, just yeah. minding its business. And mm -hmm. yeah, I would just say for now, just I'm do whatever you can to, as a deterrent. You know, if that's posting your property or yeah, your dog or whatever. Or whatever. Or posting your property. Nine one one. Yeah. Do what we can until we can all figure out. So and, and the more documentation, the better. So yeah. the more phone calls, even though it might not really go anywhere, the, you know, the more that that's documented, the better your case. So that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah. Do it. That's yeah. good. It would be, he doesn't maybe, sleep yeah, well. maybe when you chat with him, I mean, having some blocks where we can strategically target some of these areas like for three or four hours at a time but also it, it, it's probably not a bad thing mm -hmm. to have like that one hour or two hour off things where they could come like right before school or right after school you know just have like those targeted like patrols yeah. because you know I think those one hour and two hours are okay in certain spots like at school time you but know more, but um, Jordan also and Dave is, and, and, and Lori and Sharon they also know when it's going on, like yeah, when the hot just, times are. It they doesn't just change stop. it. Yeah. It doesn't stop. No, it doesn't stop. At this point, it doesn't stop. It might slow a little. But yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what's interesting it is the sheriff had gone to see a, a resident of Christian Hill who is a, a veteran, and so is the sheriff, and went to him and talked to him just to see if they needed help and uh, that they were willing to you know, help them and get them to the VA. And so, I mean, I feel like he, he, he made a, he certainly put that out there. He's, he's on like injured reserve at this point. I think he's coming back on, but uh, he can't be in the field this moment. I just saw him. So. So I do feel like there's at least been a, you know, heartfelt, I mean, at least he went to him vet to vet to, to try and get him help or let him know what was available. And yeah, it's too bad. I have another guy who's living with him now, though. It is. It sucks. Well, we just all have to get together. We have to go with Alvi. We, we all need to get together and, and do everything we can to... And I think getting Kirk and Allison Clarkson, and I mean, these are people who can sponsor bills. I actually talked, well, we talked to Kirk about that. And, and he, well, he was flooded with a lot that night. So. Yeah, but we talked to him about, you know, maybe after this community conversation, he would be willing to sponsor a bill. He certainly can do it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, he's not a junior anymore, he's been there and, and um, yeah, it's not his committee, of course, but still, it doesn't matter. He could sponsor yeah. a bill, or at least put you in touch with who 
could help because even the commander of the state police barracks is saying Vermont needs to deal with you know bail reform. And this gentleman has been a police officer for many years. And um, but oh, that's fine. Well, we appreciate you coming yeah. and and uh, <laughs> that's all right. Well, and um, but yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm sure Jordan will let you know how. His, I'm sure Jordan will let you know how this conversation goes too with. With the sheriff. Yep. Right. Invite the news stations over. They can camp out in the front yard and take video. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Find somebody that's willing to run for office, even though there's no way they can win, and bring this up, and that's all they got. Mm -hmm. So they get in the damn news. You're retired. Yay! There you go, you volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just found the perfect person. <laughs> there you go. Good day for Congress. Maybe throw me in jail. <laughs> <laughs> We'd come visit, bake a cake and file in it. Yeah. Sounds Scrape like you'll be out in no time. Right? Scrape together <laughs> bail money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As long as you pay your taxes, you'll be all set. You'll get back out in no time. That's right. So. Well, thank you for coming this evening. Yeah. Is there anything thank else, um, public comment, anybody wanted to bring up? Or? Okay. Excuse me. And uh, let's see. On the agenda, we had. Um, uh, Chuck Davis, uh, resignation from the Planning Commission. So I just need a motion to accept his resignation. Motion to accept resignation. Second. Thank you. I don't think he was on very long, was he? Mm -mm. No. A couple months, he, maybe? Yeah, I think it was he right after took, March, he, wasn't he it? He came out of retirement, so he yeah. took a job. Huh. So this is too bad. Did, did he really move, or did he just No, took no, a, yeah. took another job. He took a job, and he's retiring. But I will say this. He's also your health officer, and he's amazing health officer. Mm -hmm. He was actually on the Planning Commission years ago. And the Constitution. <clears throat> and he eh? got into a, a controversy with some of the members and resigned. Yeah. And was he on the Conservation Commission at some point? Too? Yeah. Yep. So, he was for yeah. a little bit. When yeah. I when I came onto the board, he was on yeah. the Conservation Commission. Yeah. But he is a good health officer because he's been working with the yes. situation yeah. on my street. He has. And and he's not done even, a that's really cool. amazing job. It's way outside his purview. He's just really doing that because he's yeah. such a lovely person. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, but we've had conversations, and, and she's even emailed me, um, and I've reached out to thank him and talk to him. But yeah, he's he's really good. He's really good. Yeah, he's he's the best. And then we had the information in there from the class four road committee in regards to Thayer Road. So this was, they went up, and I didn't include all the pictures, but they went up. I think the issue had been with Carol Gillette that they had, um, somebody building near her wanted to put the power lines in the road, and, and it was going to, and it was an issue for her. So, um, but in the end, I believe they made an agreement so that they didn't end up putting the power lines where they thought they had an easement and where they thought the class four road went. So... She ended up being, I understand, happy in the end because the homeowner, you know, neighbor didn't do that. But um, so they went up and checked it all out and took pictures and, and stuff. Thayer Road, is that the one that works there? Off from Ringe. Ringe, so you, then you take a right. You take a right, yeah. yeah but it only the first, like, spitting distance is class three and then up, it's class four. It goes up until the, I think, it, where that turn is. It goes up to her house. Well, her house is straight. Mm-hmm. But there's uh, another little development that has a gate at the bottom of it. Yeah, they built, yeah. I think the three Did go right to there. Somebody built up there. Yeah. yeah I can't remember their name. Uh, um, it's like a trust or something no. that owns it. Yeah, because they, isn't that the property I think that they bought from Lang. Mills from Lang, yeah. I don't know what's up there, but they and, have a gate at the bottom. Yeah, and so then, um, so, she, you know, Carol's way at the end. So it becomes, yeah, there's just the first, like, mm -hmm corner and then boom, class three is over. So basically where all the upgrades were that we did to the road. <laughs> Once that stops, that's for four. Yeah, you can see. You know, where it goes back to uh, Barry Bush. And yeah, Kraft. and I think that it, I think that it connects back down to um, maybe towards Lilliesville or, you know, towards the road. Does? But I think so. I but thought it stopped at her house, no? No, no, that was why they were up there looking oh. at it. And um, so, he, I mean, if you read their report, they Robert talk about Robert Crowley has a camp up in there somewhere, too. Oh, okay. I don't know. He just said they, um... Well, there's a bunch of, well, not a bunch, there's a couple of camps if you keep going up Ringe. Yeah, no, it's on Thayer. Yeah, yeah, he said he's not sure what, yeah, okay, they're just the vehicles... And then from Ringe, 
the end of range turns into yeah. Would cut that used to come class from, probably still well. does if you can got the right vehicle from back down on the wood. Yes, yeah, right. right. Yeah, well, yeah. It's exactly. more ATV at this point to there, mm -hmm. but yeah. But yeah, so they went up and, and looked at. I guess I thought he'd made contact with Carol, but I guess not. But um, he's saying without a survey to figure it out where it goes. But it ended up that they moved the, you know, end up putting power somewhere else. So. That made her happy, which I don't blame her. She lives out there in a beautiful view and, mm -hmm. and um, wanted some clarification about where it was. But then it became I drove up there when they, were getting, when they were starting developing that. You want to talk about the view. Mm -hmm. Those people on the left, where they where they're built. At the mm -hmm. top of Ren? Uh, yeah. It's on mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Uh, that gate. Up, yeah. 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 Uh, boy, that's Steep. quite a view up there. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. It's, it's a nice area there. So, anyways, that's what they had provided us with. So I just gave you the packet. So, okay. And you may have already dealt with this horse. This yeah, year. I think we talked with quite a bit about the sheriff's department stuff. Yeah. So, sounds like when Jordan gets a chance to talk with them. I'll talk to Teresa on Monday. And, Let and me know. And yeah. I mean, I, I guess no, not to spend too much time on it, but I mean. I, my opinion, anyways, is if we are going to do speed enforcement, that anything that I would call the village area needs to be strictly enforced. Like, like a 40 and a 25, in my opinion, is just, that's ticket time. That's not like, yeah, zero time. oh, you were going a little over it. I mean, 40 and 25, I mean, most of us, if you look at your speedometer and you go through town, you're doing like 20. Right, I mean, There's navigating also the radar cars in and, town that tells you how yeah. fast you're going. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah, like up here on Sand Hill too. People, I did see a dead chicken in the road yesterday afternoon, first time. They got yes. one of them. Yeah, man, it was on the church. Chickens are bad. It was right in front of the church. They must have missed it for the I've chicken dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the chicken dinner. Something no. was that was Saturday night. But I just, I, and I don't know. I just wonder mm -hmm. if, you know, inside the village area where it's 25 miles per hour, like. 40 and a 25, and then giving them no ticket, that's just, I mean, that's that really just fast. Just I mean, I mean, I could see being 10 or maybe even 15 over, like, on the outskirts of town, but, like, in the village, you got the school, you got, you know, like, I just, I think they really should drop the hammer on that. If somebody's I mean, this is really, over I mean, 30, taking know, them, you know, I, like, just My like, daughter wants to walk to the store from the field, or da da da, da and it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, this That's, is just it is like yeah. is town safe it's a anymore? small mm -hmm. section of 25 is miles an hour as soon as you get out of the little kids little, yeah. to comes to 35 to so get yeah, that's a once they get right. to the fire exactly. station exactly and, and luckily we're working on that sidewalk to make some of that safer so mm -hmm. that the you know we have that with Du Bois and King so we're going to do the sidewalk to the school we're also going to upgrade that crosswalk so it will be because there was one safer for you know pedestrian one, two, safety three, for crossing four, and whatnot there because we're going to have the flashing lights which is the same thing we got for downtown which but, yeah and it wouldn't take long I mean, for them to have zero tolerance in the village for people to go <clears throat> I mean, seven. Yeah. Just don't do it in the, like, you can't do it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, or it's just going to happen. Yeah, seven of the nine pullovers for speed were in the 25. And they were, all, all of those were 40 to 47 miles per hour. And they didn't dick at any of them. You know what I mean? Like, 47 and 25. Like, that's. Yeah. And then. They're flying. Are the zeros no ticket? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Right. yeah. I'm going to assume that's. That's yeah. not the value of the ticket. No, I think no. that's no no ticket. No penalty. It says penalty at the top of the column, I think. Yeah. Now, of course, there's a couple that have tickets on it, but they don't say what the actual and posted speeds were either, you know? Like, there was three three of the four tickets, they didn't even say what the speed was on them. Hmm. One was North like... North Road, Cleveland, Brook, that's, I think... Th there, it drops down to 35 miles on that corner, and then it jumps up to 50 at the cabinet shop. Yeah. I mean, one, they got the 68, <clears throat> 68 and a 50, which is on Route 12, which... 40 and a 25 at Perham. I mean... And it's Perham. They should be ticketing those people. You have an issue up there. I don't care if they're going six over, or five over. Ticket yeah, them up there. No but there was, um, a, there was a lot of them, you know, one, two, yeah. three, four on Main Street, one on Christian Hill or I guess you can say two on Christian Hill, if you count the Perm Christian Hill one, but. Yeah. And if they, well, that's they, Christian Hill, they just pulled them yeah, over at that. Yeah, just like, <clears throat> I mean, I think you just really, I mean, if you wanna, and again, I think they need to have the flexibility because maybe it is a great time for a learning curve. Like maybe it's a, 
But I can tell you as a kid, like, I remember I got a ticket my first week I got my license, and that was a learning <laughs> curve. You know, I, between my mom and dad giving me the boot and not yeah. getting the car, it was a learning curve, you know? So um, it worked out pretty well, and, you know? Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I'd say kinda, only the ones that have ticket numbers are the ones that were actually written a yeah. ticket. I'm just which wondering. Which have if, the penalty attached. Maybe especially the village ones if they just yeah, get a little Yeah, 25 more. Main Street is where the grain place is. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's about where, you yeah. know, I mean, basically the village, is, you know, kind of starts there. I mean, it's yep. going, you know, especially you know, going through town, dangerous enough parking on both sides of the street, it seems like, you know, like, oh, I, good Lord. I don't, I don't think I could go through downtown at 40 without hitting something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or someone. So, mm -hmm. sure enough. but I don't know, maybe just talk to him on that. I think that's probably <clears throat> zero tolerance on all 25s. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. I already warned my daughter. I mean, she doesn't speed, but I said after our last meeting, I said we're gonna drop the hammer on this thing. I said, you make sure you keep your butt under 25. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. all right, changing meeting dates. Well, I don't. I'm fine with working um, both those days. Is so usually what happens is the office is closed, so I will mm -hmm. work, and I will definitely work on October 14th, because the auditors are coming the end. So I don't know, I'm happy to keep them, but I also don't know if you guys have plans. So if you wanna. Um, we all know I'm working. Huh, you're working, I'm working. I mean, they don't bother me at all. I can leave them the same. I'll be here. Um, okay. I might not be here. October 14th is the day okay. I gotta go down. Okay. Hand over. Unless it changes between now and then. Okay. <clears throat> but I'm around. Might not be. Here. All right, so everybody's around. Okay, and I, like I said, I generally work during the day because the office is closed. You get mm -hmm. stuff done. It's like baseball. So, okay, I just wanted to make sure you guys didn't. Oh, how did Christmas? I think I looked at December, but let me just quickly look at No, we're now. good. We're good for just, well, I don't know, last year. Christmas this year is on uh, Wednesday. So we're going to meet the 9th. And New Year's is on, New Year's Eve yeah, is on but, a Tuesday. So do you want to meet on the 23rd of Christmas? Christmas school will be the 9th and the 23rd. Yeah, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Scrooge, just making sure, but no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> we'll work late one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I, yeah, I, I think I got Santa things. Claus. Yeah, no, it's fine. I think be fine. Okay might not be here for that one. Okay. For travel song. Yeah. That's fine, the you know, 23rd. and that could change. We now I think we right. just skipped it last that. year, didn't we? Well, we I think didn't, we did one. Yeah. We ended up skipping. We ended up right taking one off. Because we took it one just off. wasn't enough to do. So look, Jordan's like, please. The 23rd? Yeah. All right. Maybe. I'll make it up. Yeah. Is it going to be last minute Christmas shopping? I'll s <laughs> or just starting it? I'll just yeah, make Christmas a note. and Thanksgiving Getting is the one thing together. that we usually do do off. I'll say, I'll make a note, skip 12-23 if possible. If we don't have a big yeah, agenda, yeah. there's no yeah. reason that you yeah, can't. Yeah. So. The only thing, it's just, it's just challenging because it's a, it's a five-week month. Well, maybe we'll do it before. You know what I mean? So if you didn't have one, mm -hmm. then you're going to go one, two, three, four, like you're basically getting, five weeks until you have your next season. one. So maybe you but. do it the, we could also do it. We've done them back to back, the 9th and the 16th. I mean, so we could talk, we could, yeah. so we'll be up. You could bump it to the 30th. Yeah. 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 So we'll, we'll. Would so. it be the 30th and then the Are we 13th? Or the 9th and the 16th in December. Yeah, it'd probably be more like the 9th and the 16th, probably. Sure. So, all right, I'll make a note, 12-9 and 12-16. All right, so we'll see about doing that. That'll work better than the 23rd. And then, don't forget uh, to remind me. <clears throat> huh? <laughs> I told Dave, don't forget to remind me. There you go. Well, we'll remind you. <laughs> so, okay, I just wanted to make sure you were all set with mm -hmm. Veterans Day and you know, people Day. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell me Andrew's report. So Denise and I are going to go to the town fair on the second. There's some good classes, and we're taking well, we're taking all different ones except for one, I think. So yeah. That's that's nice. We're going to be able to cover a lot of bases. Um, I also was going to let you know. I'm sure I gave you the wrong EPA numbers because Martine and I, the lady helping me, she was looking at one set. Apparently Bethel has the downtown, um, the designated district as one area, and then the town is the other. So. We regrouped. She was using the downtown designation area, and she said we could do that. So we have, in the downtown designation, we have 40.8% um, 
of, uh, of the people in that area living under the 200% poverty level. So that criterion qualifies us for a waiver. So I have sent them all the backup, and if that goes through, then they'll waive the 150,000, which was our match to the Bernie Sanders earmark. So yeah. she seemed really positive Excellent. about it. Excellent. Excellent. It is, but it's, yeah. also, I mean, it's sad. Yeah, it is. Well, that yeah, you get Depot I mean, and Peavine and. Well, because yeah. it's out of, you know, I mean, it's out of 600, yellow, 600 and. 37 people, there's 258, so it's, you know, I, so. I, I understand that, the, the hard part <clears throat> for me, what is 200% of poverty level? It's the. What, I know, I know the, the what's the number? Yeah, oh, let me number. see if it. Oh, I looked it up. I think it's under 40,000 for a family of four. Yeah, I. You sure? I, I think. Look. I think it's a lot more than that. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'd have to go back and look, but it could save you $150,000. So, <laughs> yeah, so. I'm going to say that part. I'm not blaming mm -hmm. No, I know. I didn't think you were. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, I can, I'll make a note. What is the poverty level? Um, and it may be in one of the spreadsheets that she sent that, if, you know, I'm sure you're surprised, but the Census Bureau website is a nightmare to, yeah, I've seen to it deal some, with. Some place we're Holy looking at. cow. Um, so we did get two checks from the state of Vermont liability claim fund, one for 54,174.13 to pay for the used fire truck, and one for $377,015 for the new truck. And Gary has ordered the fire truck, so they did make us whole, which is what they had agreed to. And um, so Gary has, we're just waiting for the order number, and then we're gonna cut the check and, and um, move forward with that. Purchase. So that's good. Yeah, so that is good. Excellent. Um, I actually, funny story, I told you I met, I reached out to Fish and Wildlife after we figured out who owned the property at Graham. It was kind of a. I thought the tax department owned it. Well, yeah, so that's who we sent the bill to. And then when I called them, the lady's like, or I emailed, she said, We don't, I got a hold of VTrans, who owns it. Then it was the tax department. Then they tracked down Fish and Wildlife. And I don't know. So, so somebody, we met a gentleman, very nice gentleman today, Will Eldridge, uh, AJ, myself, Mark Boacher, on Graham Street. So he came from Fish and Wildlife. And I just said, look, you know, I don't know, your access is gone. I mean, there's um, nothing there. And I said, we'd give you a curb cut. But he said the state can't sell the land and well, they I don't have it on different. their radar to make it into like a wildlife park or fun, and he said he does think if he needed access, he could get it further up on Graham Street by the telephone. Mm. So I just said, look. So he looked over the bank, and he's like, are you considering doing a project here? I said, no way. That'd be way too expensive. He goes, good, because if you did, we'd have a whole EPA, got to yeah, go to the feds. I'm like, no. So we talked to, well, we can't because of one of the, the houses around the corner. 60,000. But I did make a deal today with Mark Boacher he has this berm, a really big berm on the side of his lawn that he wants removed. So AJ, so the road foreman is going to, they're gonna go in and remove that berm, which is gonna buy us a few feet, which should be, which is inside of our right of way. I hope I'm working on that right now with the state, but um, he was fine with it. And he said, if we want to travel over a little further, so we don't have to move far enough yet to go between the two trees, but by removing the berm, he wants it gone. And I said, you know, I'm not making a financial deal. We're just going to move the berm to the edge of the road. We're, no, we're just going to, the berm's on his lawn, so not the road for, for side, not the river Dr. side, Dinosaur. it's his lawn side where we met before, and it yeah. has a yeah. berm like this high, and he wants it removed. He said, once upon a time, I could go mow my lawn right to the road, so AJ is going to cut that berm out, and it's going to, we're going to be able to get over a few more feet, and I believe at this point, if that's a three-rod road, which I'm trying to verify with the state, we'd be in our right-of-way. Well, what I was saying is, are they going to take the berm material and put it at the edge of the road? Oh, the other side, you know, I see, like, probably, most likely. And the, um, the other thing I got thinking there afterwards, you know, again, I don't know how much liability we'd have if somebody drove off the road there, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, it might be something. Remember how we put those concrete blocks up on yeah. on uh, Upper Gilead? Gilead. Mm -hmm. We may want to look at something like that. At least that it will stop a vehicle, a moving vehicle from. Sure. You know, we may want to look at that, and that's kind of an inexpensive option yeah, to. It's a good option. Yeah, I'll talk uh, to. Put some AJ of those concrete blocks out there. So we sometimes did you can get some people to donate some old Jersey barrier that doesn't yeah. meet code anymore. You can 
do that without hooking them oh, together. Oh, do you know someone? There's, there's <laughs> contractors everywhere. Because they change the specs on that. No, that. we don't have We had to change it all um, over. But, you know, there's that stuff. and Because um, we yeah. probably should put something there, even though it's not our property, but it's our road. And if somebody ever yeah. drove yeah. over there and... Yeah, and um, the other thing that AJ and I talked about is once you go past Mark's house, headed towards, you know, Lower Graham, we'll call it, towards Pam's house, mm -hmm. um, you have the Rogers right there. What we talked about was discontinuing, or making a class four from past the Rogers down the hill, because that road's doing the same thing that Findlay was doing, where you get just getting these, like, stress cracks in it. And I drove up it today, and it reminded me of driving up Ranch, how you've got this, like, massive drop mm -hmm. on one side. and. Um, so anyway, so that was something that we talked about today. But anyways, the gentleman just reached out and said, hey, can you meet today? I'm like, sure. So um, like I said, I'm researching the width of the road. I went through the land records today, and then I just sent an email to the state tonight to see what she had. Um, we also have got our um, energy audit stuff for town hall and the town office. And I talked to Jordan about it. And Jordan Harry from Two Rivers, I told you, was doing our application. So we went through, you know, obviously we don't need an EV charger at the town office. I didn't have parking for the people that work there. You know, I'm not taking up a charging spot. But we went through all that. So he put in everything there. The, the thing he did put in that I was like, eh, we don't need that, is um, one of the, I think maybe one or two of the mini splits because he said he feels like <coughs> that that's gonna be an attractive, that might be something that they're looking for in the grant. So once we do insulate the attic and some other things, it you know it may be a possibility. So we so put in for an upgrade of electric service then. Um you no, I already up I updated some mini splits and you're gonna to have to upgrade that electric service. But I updated the electric service to hundred amp you, 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 well yeah but you're gonna to have to go farther than that. Yeah, okay. Well, way farther. well I don't know. The, that was all part of it. It's all yeah. part of the, the grant. What are those double thirties? Yeah. yeah. So you're up to a hundred. We're up to. You can go apply for up to five hundred thousand dollars. So we did everything at the town office that it that it mentioned. We put in for. Yeah. Um, I don't think they thought of that. I don't know. I don't. I think there was energy. I'll have to look. I actually have the printout, and I'll put it in your next packet. And then the town hall. Um, we just kind of picked some of the other things that needed to be done. There's some caulking and some window stuff and just, you know, not, the building is just isn't used that much. And some of the paybacks were, mm -hmm. they, years. To say the least. So um, anyway, so. Now you can't do much with these windows because of the historical thing. Right, and we had already, and there had been a group for a while raising money for acoustics before I came. And one of the things we talked about was insulated curtains or something so that they would do one thing, something for acoustics as well as, you know, managing the heat. but. And we would keep this place turned down anyways. So, and we also put in a, you know, a Wi-Fi thermostat so I can adjust it from the office if it's on a schedule. So um, anyway, so he did the application, he got that in, I think we're supposed to know by the end of October, like October 28th. So the town office is gonna come with <clears throat> more things because we have to take out the underground fuel tank, that's gonna be covered by us, tear off that garage, we'll use that term loosely because the floor is so soaked with fuel, yeah. and then, I was so disappointed because they didn't, I think, that if I jammed hard enough, I could put a butter knife through the outside of that building. But they said the envelope was, you know, front was okay and the back was fair. And I'm like, oh. so I think we're gonna end up residing that thing. But I was so disappointed, I'm like, <laughs> Come on! Uh, and we also put in for asbestos remediation yeah. because vermiculite in the attic as well as some asbestos oh, tile. Yeah. So he did put in for everything. So yeah. we'll know the end of October and um, hopefully um, all that got through. Um, so what else do I have for a MERP update? Ah, so Sand Hill is starting tomorrow mm -hmm. back on the stormwater project. I had told Alvi earlier. Um, we should expect to see a roof, a uh, standing seam roof on the Crystal Drive pump station by the end of this week. And, um... Is that up and running yet? No. Has it been tested or... Mm. No, no, still. Oh, well, the, the Crystal Drive, they all yeah. have new water lines. Right. And their pressure has increased a teeny bit. But the pump station itself, 
<coughs> has been built and there's a waterproof membrane, but it, membrane on the roof, but it needs the standing seam roof. Once that's done, the contractor's gonna bring in their carpenter and they're going to spray foam um, and I believe sheetrock or something, and then Champlin Associates will come in and put in all the pumps, all the electronics. Okay, so we're not that far. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. we talked about that. So I had a talk, we met, uh, Jimmy and I met on Friday. And then um, the boring should be done by the end of the 27th. So the boring is done, and they kind of, you know, hammer, weld on a piece, hammer, weld on a piece. So that's done. But what needs to go through is the pipe still needs to go through. So. And think, uh, they're, so on the, on they're on the other side of the railroad tracks now, aren't they? That's what Brad was telling me. Yeah, so they're, yep, they go to the other side of the tracks, which is where, um, so that's, we have a, they have to attach over there that we didn't phase one. So that way, now we'll have a loop in the system, which just makes the system line up a lot better. Um, Minosh is, Richard Minosh. called Minosh. They're going to be coming to pull the pump at the um, the, at the well house and um, because we've been having some issues with it. So whether or not we'll get the building this year or not, I don't know, but that doesn't matter so much as long because we have a hatch in the roof so we could at least pull the pump and get that work done. So things are happening. Um, the Deering culvert is finished, the arch pipe that went in there, and then two culverts are going in that, that we're paying for that we did not get grant money for on Camp Brook Road, and I believe he, Hallstrom, I think, is starting tomorrow or next day. So we're definitely getting things going, obviously, for the end of the, well, of the year. Time. Yeah, and um, so, and the ditching has been done on Sand Hill. The road crew did the ditching um, from Mike Davis's up to the garage, and AJ, I think he still needs to said he needs to shave that berm off that we talked about a little bit, but um, by Mike Hakra's but, um, property. So he's done, so he's you know, certainly not holding up the stormwater project. So we'll be doing things. I'm also doing a speed study on Gilead because there's a complaint about the speeding on the beginning of Gilead, which was a 40 mile an hour when it was paved. So I, I have explained this <clears throat> multiple times. The study didn't work in your favor at all. Not. It doesn't. Well, sometimes it, it, it doesn't. It, sometimes it, it doesn't. Go Most of the time it, yeah. And I have explained that, um, and um, so I, I talked to Rita at Two Rivers. She's going to do a speed study for me, put it out tomorrow, I think, and pull it by the first. And I did talk to you know Sandy Levesque about it, and I said, I'm going to tell you right now, tell all your neighbors, creep over that thing. Do not speed because, and I explained to her, yeah. you know, the town cannot adjust the speed limit without a speed study. Now, we could go around and post the whole town at 10 miles an hour, but the sheriff could never enforce it because it wouldn't be legal. And I explained to her that the legislation is, in my opinion, wrong, <laughs> because mm -hmm. if you're going over the speed limit, we should be able to lower it, but they say you can increase it. I don't know who wrote that bill. But anyway, so I explained that to Sandy. So my said, you tell all your friends, everybody lives on Gilead, creep over that thing because you need to offset the speeders if you want to try to get it to drop from 40 to 35. We just can't willy nilly go in and change it. And uh, so anyways, it doesn't cost us anything to do a speed study. So <laughs> so we'll see, yeah, that's what I would do. I used to do that. Yeah, there was one in particular in uh, another town that I worked in and I did that. I was like, I was like, I really need to drive the speed on this road. Did not work, um, uh, but it, you know. So it's a messed up logic. Uh, but anyways, we're doing the speed study just to, you know, certainly doing what we can. And uh, so I think that is it. So Dave, the two hundred percent is sixty-two four yep. for a family of four. There you go. Thank you. Of poverty. Thank you for looking that up. Okay, select board meeting minutes from the 9th. Well, yeah, 9th. Yeah. Yep. Look good to me. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then we had a bunch of communications in the back. The rec committee. I put in August and September, Ellie. Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. I checked this afternoon to make sure we didn't have to slip them in there at the last minute. Mm -hmm. 
Trustee of Public Funds. Yeah, Fire Department Advisory Board Committee. Yep, and their meeting, they just put out their next meeting, so they're meeting pretty soon again, too. This, uh, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a report from the Trustee of Public Funds like that. No, there's... I mean, that's pretty... Yeah. Pretty yeah, they're, all <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're starting to do that. So it's Scott Putney, yep. Sandy Farrell, and Rick Benson are your current Trustees of Public Funds, and yep. they're certainly working really hard at becoming tran more transparent. And... Um, mm. Well, there was a lot of, you know, Carol had a lot of it in his, in his it. ears, you know, and he yeah. wasn't sharing it with anybody. So they've been past two, three years now trying to rebuild everything mm -hmm. and, and put Did it all. Did you see a journal, though? He had a big journal like ours. Oh, yeah. And because I had to ask him about some stuff. And, you know, 10 years, 20 years yeah. worth of yeah. Yeah. scribbled numbers. Yeah, he used to bring in, he had this little green book and then his checkbook and he would bring it in every year for the audit. And uh, so it was because obviously his, the public, trustee of public funds books get audited just like ours. And uh, so, but he was always, you know, super like ran out pencil and stuff, whereas Sandy's obviously computerized at all. But um, then we also got a legal opinion for them for a couple of their wills that they weren't sure about whether or not they could, what they could do with the interest, that sort of thing. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Bob Fletcher, I think, looked at two of the wills for them, and then uh, last I knew from Scott, they think there's still need to maybe go get a couple more from probate that they can't find because they need to, you know, sometimes the fine print is you can only spend this or you can only do that, and uh, so they were looking at that as well, but they want to prepare something bigger for town report. <clears throat> And anything else to come before the board? We need to work on my contract. I, I, wrote, I think I sent you a copy, and then I have a copy, and i got to read it again. So we, we need to do that, too, before October. Something. So do you get any feedback from Gary or anyone about the first advisory board meeting? Yes, Gary was tickled. He's got... When I read this. It, it, it yeah. looks like... Whoa. Yeah, he, they are, um, yep, definitely, and he is, they're, you know, they're good with three right now, but they're, you know, still looking and have some feelers out for some other people, and, but no, he was really happy with both um, Lindley and Greg. He thought, you know, they're really willing to do the work, which is, you know, obviously the big mm -hmm. part of being on the committee, so they were great. So no, he was, he thought it went really well, and, and um, there'll be some, changes um you know certainly coming to the to the fire department as gary said he's you know not going to be um chief forever he just did it as interim so i think we'll be seeing some changes did we check. pass along to him about the telephone number yes and oh, yeah. uh yeah. what we figured out was that the station number was fine what happened was if you went to google it was dave's number that's if you Google it and you look at the Bethel Fire Department on Google. So Dave had messaged Kelly and I, and so I was went on to Google and was trying to get the edits changed. So um, and it took it, then it didn't, then it was. So uh, we tried to change it to the office number, and um, so that's where they may have ended up with his number if they Googled yeah, it. It did know. give a three I don't know his number, his cell phone number. So I thought they got it out of the little phone book. Yeah. yeah. So we're trying to oh, do yeah. that, but he said that one had been that one was being forwarded already. And then of course Gary said we have an answering machine. No one ever seems to listen to. It. So, um, <laughs> but I think that's how they got there. But because uh, Dave had mentioned there in another place, so we were definitely trying to fix that. Yep. Okay. All right, anything else? Okay, nope. just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Oh, yeah, don't get sure.